Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and in this video, I'll be talking about delamination and fracture mechanics. So, in today, a lot of companies are using adhesives and other ways of bonding different materials together, and fracture mechanics methods are really needed to try to characterize the strength of these uh, bonding and, and adhesion regions. So, let's take a look at an example here. Here we have a, uh, a bi material strip. We've bonded two materials together. The top material is, the bottom is steel and the top is copper. Now, classically, when we look at structures like this, we want to look at the stresses. What, the way I'm loading the structure is that there is a fracture, a crack, and I'm applying a displacement to the top while holding the bottom stationary. So there is a stress singularity at the tip of the crack. And this is the issue. When you have two materials bonded together and delamination is occurring, the stress at the tip of the crack is always a stress singularity, which means that it's very sensitive to the mesh and we can't really get an accurate stress result. In order to capture the results at the stress singularity, we typically look at use fracture mechanics methods. So we can evaluate the energy release rates here for VCCT values. This type of issue also occurs during thermal expansion. So if I have a, two materials bonded together and I heat it up, thermal expansion causes stress at the interface. The stress again is a singularity value at the tip, as you can see here, which again requires fracture mechanics tools to evaluate the behavior properly. In this particular example, I set up a parametric analysis where I'm varying the size of the mesh at the crack tip, and I'm looking at both the stress and my, my fracture mechanics parameters. You can clearly see that the maximum stress is a stress uh, singularity in that every time I reduce the size of the mesh, my stress increases significantly. However, my fracture mechanics parameter stays pretty much uh, the same. This gives me confidence that I can use fracture mechanics as a way to gauge how strong a bond is at an interface. So now I'm going to set up a simulation from scratch to give you an idea of how the workflow within ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. We're going to start with a static structural analysis. I'm going to build a bilinear, bimaterial strip. So I'm going to include structural steel, and let's try aluminum this time. And we're going to create a geometry. I'm going to do a double cantilever beam test uh, simulation, because this is typically what you need to do to characterize the fracture mechanics parameters. Uh, in order to understand what the energy, energy release rates are for uh, a crack, we need to do testing. So things like double cantilever, in notch bending and uh, and various other methods, three point bending methods allows you to capture uh, and measure the energy things like energy release rate, stress intensification factor, and J integrals, and these will provide uh, data for you to uh, understand when things will break. So let's go ahead and quickly sketch up a model here. This will be one piece of the material. This will be another piece of the material. And uh, so the way, so we have two materials. I just eyeballed the, the sizes here. And this has, has some nice tools for, for setting up these basic problems very quickly. We can split the edges. So this will be a 2D simulation. I'm going to split this edge, and I'll do say 10%. Here, we'll split this edge also with 10%. And finally, this edge will also be 10%. So we're splitting the edges. Okay, so we have an edge here, edge here, and one down here. So this will be my support, this will be my load, and this will be the crack. I have just a single surface right now. So I need two pieces of material because I need to define two different materials. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste this and delete the top. Okay. 
So now I have two materials, one for the bottom, one for the top, and the edges are still all maintained. Um, in fracture mechanics, it's important to define the fracture very carefully. So where the two parts meet here, there needs to be two sets of nodes. One that belongs to my aluminum side, the other belonging to the steel. This edge here will be bonded together, so the two materials will be sharing nodes. We do that through Workbench by clicking on the share option. I'm going to share only this edge, leaving this edge unshared, so this will be red. If I click on the OK button, it's going to share everything. So I'm going to not click on the OK button and hit Escape. And that's it for my preparation. Let's go back to my Workbench schematic. The simulation will be a 2D analysis, so let's make sure it's set to a 2D analysis. Then we can go ahead and set up the, the simulation. Okay, so this is the model. We're going to follow my tree down here. The first step is to make sure that we define this as a plain strain simulation. We're assuming that this is an infinitely long uh, structure. We have a, a contact region defined between the two parts. Sometimes needed. Uh, if there's compression or sliding, but because I'm applying only tension, I can get rid of the contact region here. Mesh, the fraction mechanics mesh requires us to have a linear element, so I'll specify linear elements here. Well, I'll, I'll leave it uh, a coarse mesh for now. So very coarse mesh, but there is a, an edge here where it's separated. So let's set up the rest of the, pr the problem first. As I mentioned earlier, set up a support on the bottom and we'll apply a displacement at the top. I'm going to do a uh, stationary in the X direction and one hundredth of a millimeter in the Y direction. So this is how we set up a regular simulation. We run it, we can calculate the, the stress and deformation, but since the stress at the uh, fracture tip is a singularity, our stress value won't be very useful. I'm gonna, this is the option to show vertices to show you where the vertex is. So in order to set this up as a fraction mechanics problem, we have to first go to the model tree and add in our fracture mechanics branch. Fracture mechanics branch will allow us to assign a pre-mesh crack, so we have to define the tip as well as a coordinate system. So let's do that. This will be my tip, my crack tip. I'm just going to use the, the default name here. And we're going to convert this tip, crack tip, into a node name selection. So this will be a single node that defines where the crack tip is. Fine. Put that in there. Next, we need to define the crack location. So we're going to move the coordinate system to onto the crack itself. Go to crack coordinate system and define then on the, the pre-mesh crack here, we can say this is the actual coordinate system. The big red arrow here is normal or perpendicular to the crack front. Once we have that, go ahead and assign, insert the fracture tools. The fracture tools will be calculating on my pre-mesh crack here, calculating the stress intensification factor, and let's look at the VCCT values. We'll look at the three components to the, the three uh, modes of crack and the total. So when we run the simulation, let's take a look at the deformation first. So this is on our very coarse mesh, what's happening at the crack. We can look at the stress intensification factor, uh, the VCT, VCCT values. What's important to note here is that this is pr uh, a double cantilever test. It's a primarily first mode crack. We have also second mode and third mode crack behavior, and there's also a total value. So the energy re release rate here is calculated, and at a basic level, use this value to compare different designs to try to alleviate the amount of um, uh, energy at the crack to see, see which type of design will reduce things like delamination 
or fracture. Um, when you have enough test data, you can correlate to when crack will grow and when crack will um, will be initiated. So there's a lot. So and the most important part again is that the values you get here are independent to a much less dependent on the stress. It's not a stress singularity. So you can rely on the value here. Um, just as a demonstration, we can select the vertex and I'm going to insert mesh sizing here. It's a vertex sizing, so we can define within a, let's do a half a millimeter sphere. I want my mesh to be 0 0.5. So this allows you to refine mesh in, at crack tips, and we can solve the simulation again. This was originally, I think, 2.2, right? It's still 2.3 with a more refined crack uh, mesh. And this type of methodology can easily be uh, implemented for thermal stress as well. So. Let's go ahead and do a second static structural analysis, maintaining all of the previous setup. Uh, instead of uh, setting up the simulation again, we're going to do a thermal loading. So I'm going to do a thermal condition, select both parts, and we'll heat them up to 100 degrees. Uh, to stabilize thermal problems, typically I turn on weak springs. And I should turn on large deflection as well. So let's go ahead and move these down. Yeah, they're both steel. Let's change one of them to aluminum. And we'll solve the whole thing again, both simulations. Okay, so let's take a look at the, so this is as what we would expect with uh, thermal expansion induced fracture. You can see that there's penetration, so we should to do it accurately, we should really assign a uh, frictionless or contact, nonlinear contact between the two parts so that sliding is possible. But for now, let's focus on the energy release rates. You can see that the th mode 3 fracture is zero, but it's a combination of mode 1 and mode 2. So fracture mechanics can, when cracks grow, can be a mixture of mode 1 and mode 2 fracture in order to understand, compare different designs uh, to ensure that fracture is minimized. You need to get do multiple testing to understand uh, both the critical energy release rate for mode 1 and mode 2 crack and also the mode mixity. In ANSYS, we have a wide range of options available to look at mold mixity for linear fracture criteria. This is to model the growth of the crack. Um, so usually I would recommend customers initially to investigate the energy release rate in different modes and compare designs. At a later date, <clears throat> at a later date, with enough testing, you can start predicting at growth rate and uh, start correlating simulation to data. This is a quick demonstration of fracture, fracture mechanics, the, how to set up these simulations on basic 2D models for testing, as well as the justification behind um, when you need to look at fracture mechanics. Thank you and have a good day.